Come now into my coven. Hey there, Rock and Roll Junkies. Charlie here with another Grey Wolf review. This episode, Merciful Fate, with their debut album, Melissa. Now, this album is one of the greatest debuts in all heavy metal. I think Merciful Fate is just one of the biggest, most influential bands of all time. You know, for just thrash, for black metal, for just any heavy metal that came afterwards, Merciful Fate was there at the forefront. Merciful Fate just created that heavy metal, like evil, just sound and just perfected it. Well, maybe, maybe they didn't create it, but they just perfected it to a degree where, you know, it hasn't really been taken before. And they did it in just such an authentic and original way. And that is, again, it's been, you know, tried to be copied, but it's never been done as well as when they did it. And I love this band for that reason. So I'm very happy here to review their first album. So this is Melissa, released October 30, 1983. Track by track, let's do this. Opening track, Evil. Now, right off the bat, you know, you hear those classic fate riffs that are just so good in these pummeling drums and the bass. And King Diamond just sounds so great here. I just love his high falsetto. Um, I love the mix of, you know, the low and the high. You know, and he does the overdubs where he's singing the backup vocals, and it just sounds so good, it's so so evil. You know, as the song says, you know, as the song is just real metal. It has such a nice groove to it. I love the guitars and the solo. You know, it's real melodic. You know, there's a bunch, a bunch of solos on this album by both both lead guitarists, and it just sounds amazing. I, I love you know the bell at the end. You know, it's real. Real heavy song, and you hear that bell ping. It just sounds so cool. Um, the riff at one part sounds kind of like Eye of the Tiger, like at the end. Dun, 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 dun. Right? Which, that's, that's always kind of like bothered me because it just takes me out of the song. I just keep thinking Eye of the Tiger every time I hear that, but for the most part, the second solo is real wild and yet melodic. I just, I just love it. The song then just, just ends. Just ends. I think it's pretty cool, it just leaves you with such just suspense leading with the next song, which is Curse of the Pharaohs. Love that opening riff! Oh my god, the bass and drums are just so perfect here. I, I love it when, when King when King Diamond goes, Unless you're in for the kill! In for the kill! I love that. The guitar is just flawless, the song just oozes heavy metal. Uh, I just love that ending with King is just high. Falsetto. Amazing, amazing song. Let's go into number three. Into the Coven. Beautiful melodic intro, just so beautiful. Um, it didn't, then breaks into that riff, right? Classic stuff. And it's followed by the drums and the bass. You know, it gets real metal, it's real fast. And King's highs just sound so evil here on this one. Lyrically, it's quite, you know, satanic, this one. And it, this one landed them on PMRC's Filthy 15. And I've, I've talked about that list before when I reviewed the Black Sabbath. This Born Again Trash landed on that list. And this one was also on the list. So Super Gore and Friends hated this one. Makes it even better. So I just, I love King Diamond screams on this one. You know, they get, they, 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 they get like a real slow. And like, like kind of like melodic, the song. And... You know, the guitar is just beautifully it's melodic. It's just very beautiful melodies on this song. Or just on the whole album, you know, have a sense of this evilness. But at the same time, they can be beautifully evil. And I just love that about it. And it just flows so well, the solo. And I absolutely just love the drums near the end. And it's just a real evil ending. I just love it. Love this song. Move into number four. At the sound of the demon bell. Tons of high... Falsetto from King Diamond on this one. I love when he goes high, man. I just love it. I just love it. But lyrically, real evil, this one again. A uh, great performance from the King. Great vocal melody. Um, I love the guitars. 
you know, they're just so creative and authentic with their style. Just love it, just hang, it's just amazing, I just love both of them. Um, drums and bass, just keeping that heavy beat. And it's just, you know, that high scream at the end, just music to my, literal music to my ears, I know. But uh, I just love how seamless King Diamond's voice is, you know, how you can go from low to high, like, within the same note, within like in a song, it seems like within syllables, you can just go wah, like that, like that, super fast, and I just love that about him. Um, I love the guitar near the end, and it's just a fantastic song. That sound of the Demon Bell. Let's go into the next one. Number five, this is Black Funeral. Uh, I love that plotting riff. Very reminiscent of, well, Deep Purple or Iron Maiden, you know, how they get yeah, plotting riff. But this one, very authentic, very just original, and I just, I just love the sound of it. Um, another evil song, and I just love it. <laughs> real evil, real evil riffs here. Uh, heavy drums, that plotting bass as well, and a great solo, an amazing vocal. So what can you say about Black Funeral? Then it's just perfect. So let's go into number six, Satan's Fall. Uh, it just, you know, the song starts off, and just, you're just dropped in right in the middle of like this wild, these wild riffs, and it's just great little groove to hit this one. Michael Denner has said there are about 16 different riffs throughout this whole song, which is just, just crazy to think about because, I mean, this this, this is the second, the second longest song of Merciful Faith ever made. And this one comes in at 11 minutes. So there's just so many things going on here. You know, I love when the, when the, the drums and the guitars just slow down and then the king starts laughing, he's so evil. And, and then it just starts, you know, getting those evil riffs and then the pummeling drums and then there's just so many twists and turns on this song it takes on like this musical adventure into the unknown pun intended and it's just such a musical ecstasy into like the this dark world they created here and i just i just love it it just it's amazing on every sense of the word and it's just so magical to hear this one. Love it. Let's go into number seven. Now, this is the final song on the album. This is the title track. This is Melissa. I love to say, just on that, the title track, I've never really seen an album that has a title track at the very end. Not that I can think of from the top of my head right now. Maybe it's been done before. Maybe I've even heard it before. I just can't think of any right now. So if anybody can tell me other... Uh, Albums that have put their title track at the very end, I'd like to know about them because I just think it's an interesting choice to put your title track dead last. But you know, let's move on from that. Let's just get into the song. It just starts off real dark and mysterious and melodic. And it's, it's been called a dark, uh, sinister power ballad with this gothic elements, and I think it's a perfect um, definition for this. Uh, I love it. It's just beautiful use of falsetto by King Diamond, and great drums and bass and guitars. It conveys a lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion conveyed on this song. It's just a great performance from the King, a beautiful solo, and it's just a great ending to the great album. And maybe maybe that's why they put it last, because this song is a little bit slower than the rest. Right. And it kind of... It just leaves you kind of like wanting more, you want more, you, you know, you want to go back and do it again. It's just amazing sound, and amazing guitars, and drums and bass, and King's voice, and that's just for the whole album. But let me just summarize the whole thing. I think this is one of the greatest debuts ever in the history of heavy metal ever put on vinyl. This is just a fantastic, dark, evil album at the time when, you know, it was still somewhat taboo to be evil. Now everybody does it. But at the time, you know, King Diamond and Friends, which is the rest of the thing, they were just so authentic with it. And they were just so evil. And they were, you know, they, they were just real, 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 you know, on stage. He would do like prayers backwards and do rituals. And it was just so cool to see that. And of course, I wasn't there at the time. I'd have seen footage of it and heard stories. Yeah. I would love for Merciful Faith to come back. You know, the classic lineup and to tour 
Um, my personal favorite Merciful Fate album is their second, Don't Break the Alls. I would love for them to come back and do that whole album from beginning to end. Even this one, I would just love it. I've actually never seen even King Diamond solo, which is kind of sad. Because he does play songs from this album solo. And I just kind of, <laughs> kind of unfortunate. He's never really come near me ever. But I would love to see him. I just love this album. And it's so influential. And it's, to me, I just think it's fantastic. I think King Diamond is one of the greatest singers ever. I've never really had a problem with his voice. I know some people say it takes some time, like learning curve to get into his voice. I didn't. The first time I heard it, I really liked it. And maybe it's because I'm a big fan of Rob Halford. I'm used to like high, you know, high use of falsetto and head voice and things like that. So when I went into King Diamond, I was kind of really used to it. But I really love this album. Great album. So that is the end of this review. Let's go into my pick of the vid. So my pick of the vid, I'm picking Raven with their album All For One, another classic album, Heavy Metal Raven, I find to be a very underrated band. Um, All For One, we were touring with Metallica when this came out, and it's sad how, you know, kind of Rainbow forgot it in time, and Metallica went on to become so big. But you should really check out All For One by Raven. I think it's a fantastic album, it's just like speed metal, real cool stuff, real great stuff. And, and that's all for this episode. As always, you will find a link in the description to, uh, if I can find it, at least the full albums that I talk about here you know, on YouTube. But if you like them, you should purchase them yourself. That being said, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Subscribe for more reviews. And as always, remember to stay metal, stay devil, stay evil. All right.